Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight. For those of you that do not know, my name is Tanya Pintado. I'm a wound and ostomy care nurse here at the University of Miami Hospital. It is my pleasure to be your host for tonight's English Support Group, and I am truly excited about today's topic. However, before I introduce okay. our guest speaker, right. I do want okay. to disclose that during this session, you have the opportunity to submit your questions and comments in the Q&A box located at the bottom of the Zoom screen. You are also able to use the raise your hand feature, which is located at the bottom for your chance to ask a question. We will get to all the questions at the end of the presentation. With summer quickly approaching, it is expected that a vacation may be in your plans. It's natural to feel apprehensive about traveling, especially for the first time after your operation. Having an ostomy should not stop anyone from living their life and traveling the world. With that being said, allow me to introduce our speaker for tonight. Maria Jose is a motivational speaker. Through storytelling, she has been able to connect and create an impact with people from all walks of life. She has taken her journey to help educate, inform, inspire, and challenge society's stigma. Currently, Maria Jose continues With all that being said, I now want to introduce Maria Jose. Thank you so much. I think our audio muted for a little bit there. I think so too, <laughs> just for a little bit. That's okay. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Maria Jose. Thank you so much for having me. A big hello. I am currently in Toronto, Canada. So for those of you who have visited, you may know we're a little bit cooler than Miami weather, but in the summer we do get beautiful warmth, just like all of you. I'm super excited to be here. And uh, as Tanya mentioned, I come from a very diverse background of educating both locally and internationally and globally, of course, patients of all walks of life with a focus on ostomates, um, typically. I currently sit as the and as the uh, IOA OOA director for the new 2040 focus group revamp. So it is a group for those ostomates between the ages of 20 and 40 to connect and unite. And in the past, it was quite successful. And unfortunately, with COVID, things have died down. So I've taken on the role to hopefully bring that back. So if anyone's between the ages of 20 and 40, please feel free to reach out to me. Additionally, I'm a past president of my local chapter in the Ostomy Association as I got involved at a very young age and absolutely love the community of ostomy patients that I am able to connect with daily and I mean all year round for the many, many years that I've been involved. I am a fundraising professional, motivational speaker and educator. And in addition to all those unique titles, I also work for an airline. So one of my favorite topics is travel and all the exciting things that come with travel, but more importantly, how we can make travel accessible to those facing unique disabilities, um, accessibility needs, those caregivers, educators, medical professionals traveling, or even that just that person who loves a good adventure. One of the reasons I got involved with the Ostomy Association is I was born in Santiago, Chile, many, many moons ago. And when I was born, I was diagnosed with a rare congenital abnormality referred to as cloacal extrophy. It affects all of the abdominal organs from about mid chest bone down. Typically with cloacal extrophy, your peritoneal sac is exposed and your organs are exposed. In my case, it was not the case, but it was the closest diagnosis. Since then, we immigrated to Canada at a very young age and sick kids in Toronto became my home away from home. I've had over 70 major surgeries, including two living donor kidney transplants. I have also had multiple ostomy surgeries and I'm a proud double ostomate. And one of the stigmas I love to fight is what does an ostomate look like? And I mean, all of you do not have to look like an ostomate to be an ostomate. The reason we have this amazing life-saving surgery is exactly for that. It's to save our life and give us the opportunity to hopefully go on that next adventure down the street, sleep over at a friend's house, take a train ride across the country, hop on the next flight to New York City and then Paris, 
or hop on a boat. So really it's given us that ability to live and, uh, and travel is one of my passions. So here I am presenting. I encourage you all to send me questions, post them if you're not comfortable sharing verbally or just raise your hand, press that little button and I'd be happy to speak to it. Um, so for travel, having an ostomy or having special needs of any type, your travel adventure should come with a few key features, especially during a pandemic. We are living one of the toughest times globally. So one of the key things is to respect the guidelines in your country, where you're going or what transportation requires. So your first step to travel, the first, first thing on that list should be to contact your medical team and let them know you are going on an adventure. If it is your first adventure post-operatively, I encourage you to take that leap of faith and jump in the car and drive to a friend's house and try having a sleepover. And if it is your 50th adventure and you've traveled around the world as an ostomate or with any other special needs, these tips will hopefully help you. So you're gonna speak to your medical professional and require them or request from them, sorry, a list of your medications that you are currently taking, both prescription and non-prescription. The reason for this is depending the country or facility you are visiting, not all things are legal internationally. So we wanna make sure what you need on a daily basis, be it hydration from a Pedialyte of some sort to magnesium tabs that you got at your local health food store, or maybe prednisone and steroids that you may be on, that all of those are listed. Not only is this good when you're going through, for example, international security at an airport, but additionally, should you need medical attention, that list will state what you take so that they know if there's any drug interactions when you require uh, medical assistance, or if there's something that is missing in your system that needs to be filled in. So in addition to having an active medication and, and um, like a supplement list, sorry, I missed that word. <laughs> in addition to that, your medical note should state preferably your general diagnosis. So for example, patients who have ostomies, often you hear of Crohn's and colitis, colorectal cancer, bladder cancer. Uh, sometimes it's a congenital abnormality like myself. So just a general title and diagnosis and possibly what active treatments you may be going through, be them physiotherapy, using a mobility device, um, any of those things. Things. And then, of course, the type of ostomy you have and the output that it provides. So if you have a colostomy, which is a high functioning colostomy with high output, just to make sure that detail is clear, because again, should you be facing a medical emergency, you want to be able to know what a baseline is for your health. For those patients like myself who may be on drug therapy or have active levels being taken as a transplant recipient, we check my kidney function very frequently. Um, a more recent blood work is always a good choice to have because again, you have a great baseline. So your documents would typically be three. As I mentioned before, your first letter will be the one stating your medication. The second letter is often a general diagnosis and a contact of your medical team. And then the third one can be a baseline of your levels, including blood pressure, height, weight, similar to what you would do if you're going to a general clinic appointment. Um, I hope that makes sense. Any questions on that? No, I think I'm gonna continue on. So while you're collecting these documents before your first big adventure, I recommend you contacting a, the travel agent that you're booking with, if you're booking a flight or a cruise, and see what the requirements are for your travel. During a pandemic right now, there is a lot of requirements and it is a very fluid situation. So it is changing literally by the minute. Um, working for an airline, when I am dealing with guests every day at my airport, we see 180,000 passengers a day. And uh, every hour, a, a guideline can change. I cannot emphasize this enough. We have guests checking in at night and first thing in the morning when they arrive in their final destination, those requirements may no longer be valid. And they've um, kind of looked for so many things to take off, be it a PCR test or wearing a mask versus not wearing a mask and all these things. Um, so I encourage you to contact the booking agent. And if you are not using a booking agent and you're going on a cruise or a flight, I encourage you to contact the airline 
um, or the cruise ship and, and double check what those guidelines look like. One of the key things about traveling during a pandemic that is very difficult for everyone is all the guidelines, including mask and vaccination, et cetera. One of the things I do wanna share with you is please do not take it personally. It is a lot and it is very tiring, but it is not maliciously intended to ruin your trip. It is there for everyone's safety and collectively as a planet, we are still healing. So those guidelines are gonna change and they aren't there to inflict uh, disruption on your trip. If anything, it is there to ensure that your safety and the safety of those around you come first. So with that said, I'll just jump right into what I typically carry with me to cover for a pandemic. I mean, it's tough and I'll, I'll share with you most of these things I was actually using before the pandemic. And the reason why is airlines, cruise ships, trains, buses, the Uber down the street, all these things are really dirty. <laughs> all these places are quite uh, unhygienic. And though your stoma can be exposed to a lot more than your mouth or hands can, um, it's always good to be prepared for unique circumstances. And by any means, I mean, these items, if you're taking a camping trip, will be just as valid in a park, at a camp, on a train, trekking Mount Kilimanjaro, or on a cruise ship. It doesn't matter where you are. So hand sanitizer hand sanitizer. This has become our newest best friend in the past two years, but in the past as well, I will share with you having worked uh, in various capacities with airlines, hand sanitizer goes a long way. So not only is this great on your hands, but should you encounter a surface that you need to, even if you have a child, for example, like change a diaper or something like that, you don't want this necessarily on open wounds um, when there isn't a need for it, but you can put it on counters and use a cloth to wipe down a counter. Um, your airplane seat, your cruise ship, you may be using a public lav versus or washroom versus the one in your room so all these high touch surfaces it's great to have hand sanitizer around because you can literally just wipe your hands but also wipe the surface around a lot of people don't realize like faucets and door handles things like that can be quite unhygienic um but the other thing too is if you are in a place without running water or soap access because really those are the two things you want access to and to use preferably instead of alcohol but if you don't have access to running water and soap and you are hiking and you have to go to the washroom and empty your pouch in the middle of a forest, you can, of course, sanitize your hands and surfaces or any spills and things. Um, so this is key. But what I often use with this is a Kleenex or a tissue of some sort. So when you're getting on a flight, if you don't have a Clorox wipe or if you're in a surface that might be dirty, you're gonna put a few drops or a generous squeeze even, it doesn't matter how much you may wanna reserve and use less and you're gonna wipe down whatever you need to. Your scissors fell in the toilet when you're cutting your ostomy supplies. This is really key for all of that. Um, with that said, another great alternative, of course, to um, hand sanitizer is a Clorox wipe or a disinfectant wipe. I do wanna make it very clear that these wipes are not intended for skin. They are for surfaces and urgent care needs. So of course, again, if you are in a situation where you had an ostomy leak, be it urinary, digestive or otherwise, and you need to wipe down your clothing or something like that, these are phenomenal. And don't worry about the exposure to your hands or to your leg or something like that for a short period of time until you can access running water or shower, things like that. But these are amazing. I cannot tell you how dirty airplanes are in the sense of they are cleaned, very cleaned by an amazing crew after every single flight. But there are hundreds of thousands of people that go into aircrafts and go into public washrooms and things like that. So having one of these is really great. And again, be you an ostomate or have a child with you uh, that requires a sterile station, you can wipe down like we often use accessibility washrooms um, with those like fold over tables and you may want to wipe it down if you're doing a change and you can then put your scissors and put your medical supplies down on a counter that is a little bit more sterile. Additionally, if you are dealing, a lot of people have um, ports or pick lines and they are traveling with uh, IV fluids or sometimes nutrition and hydration, you do want a very sterile surface to be able to do your dressing changes and such. These wipes come in super handy for all of that. I keep them in my car. I have them when I travel. They're my go-to. They come in different sizes. It doesn't need to be Clorox based. Um, as long as it's a disinfecting option, you should be safe. Um, but just again, be mindful that this is not for the skin unless you're in an urgent care situation. 
Um, kind of going back, I, I jumped a one key step. Going back before you travel anywhere, um, if you are traveling internationally, there are so many restrictions internationally, um, both COVID and non-COVID related. So around medication, as I mentioned before, the reason I'm bringing this up is for every single country, there is a website link on your government website that you can register, be it as an American abroad, a Canadian abroad, a Chilean abroad, et cetera. And you can share where you are traveling to and how long. And the reason why this is so key for your travel, I cannot emphasize this enough, is not only during COVID, but with natural disasters, flight interruption, or your own medical care needs, the government will be aware of your whereabouts. So often when you hear there was a tsunami and whichever country and X amount of Americans or X amount of Canadians were in this country. They're, this is known for two major reasons. One, because they have a passport, of course, and when you travel, you register uh, the moment you swipe your passport through. But second is a lot of these travelers have registered as um, their nationality abroad. And what it creates is an emergency evacuation plan for you. So often you hear, we're evacuating Americans as soon as possible. We already have 36 and they're en route and we've created rescue flights or rescue taxi services. We are taking them to the embassy, things like that. Um, so what you would do is you would register as a American or Canadian abroad before you travel or as a Chilean, Peruvian, French, et cetera. The list is very long, whichever nationality you not only have, but to where your permanent resident is. Um, and I've been in a situation I will share. I had never, I travel very frequently. I had never had to use this service, but I, I register even domestically if I'm traveling just in case. So what happened was I was heading to South America, to Chile, to a medical conference and the state of the country changed within hours from me taking off to landing. It was declared a state of emergency and they were at the brink of a civil war essentially. Um, so from military being dispersed across the country into major cities, including the one I was at, to full curfews being set and flights being grounded, it's referred to. So that's when no aircrafts are going in and out without government approval. Um, the government knew that I was abroad and I immediately started receiving notifications on my phone via email and text message because I provided both numbers um, saying options for evacuating the country. So can you arrive at the airport in X amount of time? If so, we have a rescue flight at 6 a.m., at 10 a.m., et cetera. And I was able to leave the country within about three days instead of my planned 14 days. Um, had I not done that, I would have been on hold probably with the embassy waiting for support. So please, I encourage you to consider registering above the uh, registering with the government. The links have been shared. However, if you do need them again, feel free to contact me or the team here and um, we'll be able to share those links. Additionally, when you're registering as, a, as your own nationality abroad, I encourage you to look at something referred to as TIMATIC, T-I-M-A-T-I-C. Um, so the link will be provided as well. What this is, is the global travel link, and it gives you all the restrictions a country is imposing, but it also tells you what you are required to enter each country uh, down to the hour. So it is updated quite frequently. So when you're grabbing your hand sanitizer and your mask, maybe your lovely disposable mask is not needed anymore in a certain city or country. And that's where you'll find that guideline. Um, so going back to the practical, does anyone have any questions about that before I move on again, back to the physical and practicality of traveling? Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm sorry, I, I came in a little, a few minutes late. So that's basically okay. this is about traveling with an ostomy with an ostomy or disabilities of any type for, okay. for caregivers, for medical professionals, and of course, for patients. Okay. No, I, I'm a, a, a cancer survivor twice, but uh, I really have not gone anywhere since my cancer in 2018. And I live with a peristoma hernia where I have my ostomy. So I'm very self-conscious. Um, I don't really go out much, especially after COVID. I got COVID too and I almost died. Uh, I've become co quite a, a recluse. And I think until I have my surgery to repair my hernia, um, 
that will be the case. I don't see myself traveling. I don't know. I just don't want to do it. Well, the tips that I'm going to share, I will let you know, are applicable both internationally and locally, as if you are traveling even to your friend's house or a loved one's, or even if you're going to a medical appointment, some of these tips will come into play um, in the coming words that I share. As okay. the beginning, I really wanted to share the legalities of traveling internationally. Okay. But I'm going to jump right no, into I, your I care packs it. and what yeah, to have no, in your I, bag. I carry a whole care package with me everywhere I go. Yeah, so uh, maybe this will help you or maybe you'll okay. say, hey, you know what, I'm doing things really correctly. And, okay. and I'll also encourage you, I really encourage you to consider going on that next adventure, even if it means just for a coffee at Starbucks. Oh, you're right, you're right. Um, Day at a time I, though. Exactly, but thank yeah. you. I appreciate uh, these meetings so much. I just want you to know that you're very oh nice. Oh my gosh, the team is so thrilled to have They're all of amazing. you and listen. They're here for your well-being and to hopefully stand by you as you continue to thrive as an ostomate. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt. You can continue. No, not to worry. <laughs> I think we have a few other questions, yes. so you're not alone. Don't worry. So you do. Natalie has her, her hand yeah. up. Can you repeat the spelling of that site to go on for global travel that you had mentioned? Yeah, it's referred to as thematic, but if you click the link at the bottom of your page, I believe it should be listed. If you actually, you can copy the whole thing as I've provided a list of okay. a few right. websites. Um, with the thematic, thematic is a very international travel specific. So okay. you would put mm -hmm. your destination, it asks your nationality, mm -hmm. if you have a PR card or not to the country you're going to, visa requirements, all of that. So really it will determine your specific mm -hmm. needs. So okay. I just want to share one key thing with this. Um, when you are traveling, sometimes you hear, well, my friend didn't have to do that. We all hear that, I think. Mm -hmm. I went on a cruise <laughs> and she didn't need a visa to go to Bora Bora. It depends each case. So I would be very mindful of the documents you are traveling with. So your passport, your nationality, your place of residence is very different than what your nationality can be, right? Um, all those things can affect your requirements for a country. And the other thing too is where you have traveled previously or where you are going to travel after that first stop. Um, on cruises, for example, you often don't require visas because it's called a port of entry. So you're just going mm. to the port of entry and you're not allowed mm. to venture more than mm. that 12 hour time. However, say there was a God forbid, a storm, and they said, you know what, we're going to be docked at this port for more than 48 hours, you're technically not allowed off that ship after that point. Um, so if you wanted to be off that ship and you're visiting, we'll use Bora Bora again as an example, um, you may require a specific visa or entry. You may also even just need certain vaccinations. So for example, some countries right now with COVID, which is a great example, do not require COVID vaccine versus other countries not only require it, but do not allow you to even board the flight before arriving. Um, so it's all relevant. Some of them have malaria restrictions, right? You need a malaria shot. So think of COVID similar to all of that, but also when you travel, I would not just consider the perfect circumstances, I would consider everything that comes along with that, including your health. What if you get the flu and have to stay an extra day somewhere? It's not that you were breaching a country's law. It was that you got sick and you kind of need an extra day to recover without medical care, like you're just at home, but maybe your visa didn't allow you that extra day. So just double check, okay? Uh, there's another question, I believe. Lenora? Yeah, I want to know, I mean, before I had my early ostomy, I used to love roller coasters and water rides. What would you suggest now that I have? I have not been away since, like, for two years. Well, I'm kind of scared to do water rides or roller coasters. Roller coasters. So we were going to go over some accessories uh, towards the end that may benefit you for both any type of water activity or roller coaster, um, but we'll cover that towards the end to give us more okay. time because there's a lot of different accessories that I have here for traveling. Okay, thank you. Of course. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Yeah, I was going to say, I think, you know, with any restriction, be it 
climbing a mountain, being exposed to high heat or extreme cold weather, going swimming or going dancing or, or whichever you're choosing to do. I would also connect with your medical team because really they're going to know the state of your health above and beyond anything else. So even if you're physically quite capable, if you suffer of dehydration, maybe laying in the sun in Mexico uh, 12 hours at a time is gonna be a little bit more restricted in the sense of don't forget to drink lots of water, wear your sunscreen, things like that. So always connect with your medical team, um, but there are amazing accessories. And like Tanya said, we're gonna get right into those. Um, were there any other questions around documentation? No? I think we're good. Okay, I'm gonna continue on. So here comes the fun part, guys. One of my favorite things about traveling are all the accessories that people purchase for traveling. Your restrictions. So how many times have we said, is this liquid allowed? Can my duty-free go through customs? Am I allowed scissors on this train ride for six or eight hours? Um, what am I allowed? What is actually useful for my adventure? So what am I gonna use? that I will, I know that I will find use out of it, um, but two, that it won't be creating unnecessary waste, I think, in the sense of I brought all these extra gadgets and things and uh, I didn't use any of them, so I threw them out because they got squished in my bag or whatever. Um, so for starters, I often say less is more. Pack your necessities, not your dreams. <laughs> But if it is your first trip post-operatively, I also encourage you to pack things that make you comfortable. And if that means that high-waisted underwear, as well as maybe different size pajamas because of your swelling or something like that, do whatever is comfortable for you. But when it comes to everyday accessories, I'm gonna show you some key things. Um, they go hand in hand with uh, all types of travel from bus to car, to boat, to going for a walk, or even just going to work. Um, but the other thing too is for all these types of travel, they are going to create a lot more accessibility for you and hopefully empower you to feel safe and comfortable in everything that you're doing and not the other thing is often we feel intimidated to have to explain things right so your first step was those medical notes if you're traveling internationally register with your government. And then with COVID I encourage uh, two key things, a mask, a disposable mask. Specifically, the reason for this is if you are in a very congested environment at a concert, on a plane, in a cruise ship, boarding area, you may just want to throw this out if it gets too sweaty or if you get it dirty, things like that. So you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I have to go wash my reusable mask. Um, I can just throw this out. So take a few disposable masks with you. The other thing that's great too is often people double up. So my go to is wearing an organic mask because my skin is sensitive, but not everyone has to. So my mask is double lines. There is a space for a filter. And then I put this over on a flight because when I'm getting off that aircraft, I want to dispose of whatever was the external exposure, which is this disposable mask. And then I have a fresh mask still functional um, and it hasn't been soiled by external things. So if someone sneezed near me, that's preferably on the outside of my mask, not on the inside. Um, Right in, I mentioned earlier some hand sanitizer, which we talked about. It's multi purpose, some Clorox wipes or disinfectant wipes if you are opposed to Clorox. Tissue goes very far. I mean, we all sneeze, we all have to wipe our face and our mouth, etc. But this can double as ostomy wiping. It can help with wound and ostomy care. If you have a leak and don't have a flange nearby, you can pack these in and they'll create a bit of a barrier until you're able to seek a medical attention or find your medical supplies in a handy spot. Let's talk about scissors. Scissors are a huge restriction. So as per travel on aircrafts, as well as certain cruises and trains actually now, especially with higher and higher risk around um, violence and crime, uh, restrictions on what you can carry that are considered dangerous goods, dangerous goods being aerosol cans, flammables, uh, sharps and weapons. In the past, even toenail clippers were restricted. Scissors do fall into that category. However, as someone facing medical diversity, you are able to take medical scissors with you that are less than an inch big. So let me show you that comparison in size. This is my usual ostomy travel scissor. Sorry, it's got some stickiness from the supplies on there. So you can see it's literally the size of my tip of my finger. I would say it's less than half an inch, to be honest, but we'll go with an inch just for your own gauging. In comparison to these lovely medical scissors, which also 
we can use for so many things. But if we're seeing this length difference, this is considered a dangerous good. Be it a medical supply or not, this item will not be permitted into an aircraft. It will not be permitted past security. And in many public spaces, such as a concert, or if you're going on a roller coaster in an amusement park, this is a dangerous good. An amusement park will not allow this. Okay, friends, so size of scissor is key. Um, this does not include sharps considered medically necessities, uh, like under a medical care necessity. So if you are dependent on insulin and you are doing intermittent injections um, for insulin dependence, that is not on a continuous pump. So if you're literally injecting yourselves, those are permitted. The needle is fine enough, but also small enough that it will be permitted. EpiPens also have a contained needle because it is uh, self um, self-contained, <laughs> um, you will be able to take that with you anywhere. Uh, any questions about dangerous goods? Okay, dangerous goods, a lot of people don't realize, are considered liquids. Liquids over 100 mils will be considered a dangerous good unless otherwise specified by a medical team. This is where prescription medication comes into hand. Friends, I shared this earlier. If you are on prescription or non-prescription supplements, medication, et cetera, please ensure it is listed on your medical note and preferably you have a prescription on the bottle being used. For example, this bottle here holds, I think 400 mils, full prescription on the outside. This will be traveling with me. I actually carry four of these with me on any trip. And um, if this is filled, it is about 375 mils, we'll say. It will not be permitted in an aircraft if it doesn't have the prescription on it, okay? This is smaller. I also have a one liter one. The way dangerous goods work, anything over 100 mils, even if the bottle is empty, so think of your perfume bottle, for example, if you're like, oh, but it's only half full, it will not be permitted because it's based on the measurement listed on the bottle. Um, with this said, medication is excluded from that quantity as long as there is a prescription with it. They will be swabbing it. Um, so just be mindful of that. So that is for any secure area. If you're going to a concert and you have a bottle of one liter medication, they have the right to deny it if there's no prescription on that. You're not even allowed a water bottle half the time because they don't want people bringing in external alcohol, right? So um, as long as that prescription's on there, you will be safe. With this said, sometimes I find the easiest thing to do is to pack in a clear bag. This bag here is not only waterproof and clear, it has a lovely zipper so everything stays in place. But one of the nice things is when you're putting all your items in here and you're going through international security or you're at a concert or going onto a cruise, it is very clear to see what you are carrying. So a dangerous good that is labeled like a prescription they do not need to start pulling things out and start determining what is legal and what isn't. Everything is visible. Clear bags are my best friend, both in my purse, in my car, on my carry-on, um, or even just going to a friend's house for the night, whatever. I could be going to a wedding one evening and in my purse, um, there's just a clear bag with all the necessities. Because also if you're ever seeking urgent care, they can easily open your bag and say, wow, they have medication, medical supplies, my ostomy pouches, catheters, whatever you use are visible. And there will be a quick idea that this person is facing medical diversity of any type because it is visibly able to be seen. But also when you're going through security, you don't want to be throwing underwear in the air and medication out the other way. It's always a lot easier to just put one bag in a bin and they look at it and they go, perfect, go ahead. Or if they need to swab anything, you just open it they'll swab inside and you're good to go. The other thing is by it being plastic, you have a waterproof containment, so to speak. Um, should there be a unique water situation like a flood or if you drop your bag in the pool or whichever, um, the items that you have in there are going to be well kept. One of the favorites for ostomy patients is a quickie bag for a change. So these bags sometimes come with medical supplies, but in addition to not coming with medical supplies, you can use a doggy bag. The dollar store always has fun bags, but this ties into my other hack that I have, medical gloves. I do not use any of these for any of my changes, but I always have them ready for two things. One, if I drop something I need, be it my cell phone or the scissors that I use into an unsanitary situation, 
a toilet, in a porta potty. I mean, I've been in all kinds of situations that you want to be ready. But say I run out of those bags or I don't have access to a bag to dump or um, get rid of my ostomy supplies or also just to empty my pouch. You know what? Maybe I'm in the car and I, I don't have access and we're in customs waiting to drive through a border. Like when you're going from Canada to the US, sometimes those border holds are like two, three hours. You can't get out of the car. I need to empty. These are waterproof. These are great. And once it's full, do a quick knot like a balloon and you've got an easy disposal, right? This is super easy. But also your medical pouches typically fit in here. These are stretchy. We see doctors with big hands stick their hands in. They're perfectly fine. You'll be fine. Um, but it creates a nice little emergency kit, so to speak. So if you don't have access to a disposable bag, you have an amazing glove that, uh, or two, Typically you need a set, one for each hand, but uh, these are great. These you can find anywhere as well. So you may not have access to the perfect medical supplies, but in third world countries, I will let you know, something like this will double as an ostomy pouch with an elastic over it. We're very fortunate to live in a first world country where we have not only great medical supplies, but quite a plethora of vi a huge variety of them from low profile to convexity to pouch, drainable, non-clear, nude, Let's get a cover. I want to be Santa. I mean, our ostomy pouches have a great time in North America, but in third world and developing nations, that's not the case. And something like this doubles as an ostomy pouch. So if you are in an emergency, don't think you are not capable of surviving. You can, and anything can help you through an urgent care situation, especially in a time of need. So be it tissue over your stoma site, or a little bag like this or a glove with an elastic and you'll, you'll make do until urgent care is found or supplies are found, right? But of course, our very comfortable life we live, this is a great second garbage bag, <laughs> okay? Um, one of the favorite tricks that I often show, I think everyone's gonna love this and everyone's gonna go, oh my God, where do you get them? I get a million messages after I present. Uh, see this? Can we all see that? Yeah. Oh, wrong way. There we go. Yes. Looks like a chiclet. Yeah, it looks like a chiclet. I'm going to open this up. So say you don't have access to baby wipes and you only have about a teaspoon of water. These are compressed towelettes and you find these at a dollar store, at novelty stores, even sometimes in the supermarket, in the kitchen sections. So I just want to show you how little amount of water. I don't know if you can see here. Look how little the amount of water is that I'm going to use. I'm going to dip. And watch what's happening. Do you see this expanding? So that was maybe less than a quarter teaspoon. I'm gonna use a little bit more. I wanna show you that how little I'm using right now. Barely touching, okay? And what this is is a compressed towelette similar to the J cloths you find in a hospital. And it expands to being a microfiber, super soft, now moist towel. Ta-da! <laughs> so what this is going to do is save you in a pinch, be it because you got sick and you need to wipe yourself down. Maybe you're just warm. It is very hot out and you need to cool down. A towelette can cool your body so quickly when you're doing your extremities. So your wrists, the back uh, bottom of your legs and back of your legs behind your neck, right? Like behind your ears. Think of when you have a fever or something, all these come into play. But say you're on an aircraft and you need to wipe something down, you spilt, this is gonna absorb all the liquid. Now with your ostomy changes, be it urinary or digestive, or even if it's a port, this with less than a teaspoon of water or fluid. So don't always think of a sterile fluid having to be sterile, uh, of a fluid having to be sterile for your stoma site. If you are in need and you have a cup of warm tea, tea is perfectly fine to use on your skin. It is non-abrasive as long as it's not boiling hot, be mindful of the temperature. But I've been on aircrafts where, you know what, I don't have any more water bottles left. I dip this in some tea just to wipe around my stoma. Once I have access to a washroom, I can then do a proper change and things like that. But liquids that are non-abrasive, so let's not think pop, no wine or vodka, none of those things. A light tea because it is water-based. Even like if you just have like milk at this point, anything, that is non-toxic to the skin 
is perfect for wiping you down in an emergency. One of my best friends was in the middle of the desert one year and she is a double ostomy and she had to do a change and she had nothing and she literally had these and just used spit. So these are super easy to get. You can get them online at dollar stores, et cetera. They're so soft. I cannot emphasize this enough. This is a microfiber. If you think of J cloths at a hospital, post-operative cloths, they are not like gauze. They are a very fine weave knit. I don't know if you can see this. Can you see the knit on that? It is super soft. This is like baby touch soft. And of course, you can wipe down your face and makeup and call it a day and not worry about uh, any cares. So these are one of my favorite. If you need access to these, feel free to message me. I can ship some internationally to you until you source your own um, or send you a few links for this. But these are a lifesaver. And again, it doesn't have chlorine or bleach in it. So it is non-toxic to your skin. You can use any fluid. If you're by the lake camping, you just dip this in water and now you're wiping your neck and scrub, 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 <laughs> right? So this is great for any adventure, or even if you're at a friend's house and you didn't want to take all your medical supplies, you take one of these little chiclets, as I like to call them, or tablets. I mean, this is non-invasive. This is not going to take up room. It weighs nothing. Um, and you'll feel, I think, a little bit more empowered in your changes as well, or if you just need to wipe down your hands. Um, Sorry to, to interrupt. Is there a no, particular fine. brand that you use for no. the chiclets? No, no, I don't use okay. a brand. So I, I will share. Um, you can contact me. I, uh, but if you go on eBay, they're called compressed towelettes. Um, you can go online dollar stores. I promise you have them in the same travel section. Um, you will find those like little travel bottles, the silicone bottles, things like that. You will see these if you don't. And either way, if you want to message me, feel free to message me. Um, I will share. I am a fan of just ordering from Asia Pacific. So uh, I visit some of the Asian markets online and I just order them in bulk. They come, I, I can't emphasize this enough. I'm not exaggerating on this price, probably about 30 of them for less than a dollar. Yeah, it's, and I mean, like these, I find them in places all the time and I'm like, oh my God, why is there one like in my kitchen drawer? Like they're just everywhere. They're very easy to use. And um, I mean, I think a lot of these tips that I'm sharing as an ostomate are going to go really far, but I think they're just life hacks. Like these are things that as caregivers, as medical professionals, as patients, your everyday life, I mean, whatever you are doing, you may just need to wipe your hands down with a towelette. This is where this comes into play. Um, yeah, I, I can share some links, but it's super easy to find on Amazon or on eBay or whatever, Facebook marketplace, whatever you want to use. I'm sure you will find them, but feel free to message me. I think there's a question. Oh, he's, wait, you're on mute. One second. Can't hear you. Um, while we're waiting. Yeah, he got it. Oh, you got it. Perfect. Hi. You are off mute now. Hello. Hi. Oh, hi. A uh, quick question about long flights. Like I go to India, it's 15 hour flight. Yes. Plus, you know, uh, both end time, you know, it's like 20 hours. So 100%, yeah, uh, I have a question about connect, yeah, connecting to the overnight bag. Yes. Um, you don't have to. I don't think you have to. I, I will share. It depends. Uh, sorry, do you mind uh, sharing if you feel comfortable? What type of ostomy you have? Uh, the uh, urostomy. 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 So for urostomates, that's a great option. I think an overnight urine bag is great, especially for long haul flights. However, yeah. it is not a necessity, sir. I will share with you that most flights have washrooms. And though people think, oh my God, they're so small and compact, it actually provides a lot more security for patients with uh, different types of ostomies and such. Because the space is so small, you will feel comforted by the fact that you're not gonna fall over, you're not going very far. Um, feel free to get up. With this said, if you're traveling on a plane, be it connecting or direct on these long haul flights, you do yeah. have the right to take medical supplies with you. I recommend taking extra changes, including an overnight extra bag, should you be using one as sometimes they do leak and you want to be able to switch that out. Yeah. Um, but the other thing too is 
this is, everyone's going to get really excited by this. So all airlines have a restriction referred to one carry on one personal item. Your personal item is typically a purse or a duffel bag, something that fits under the seat in front of you. And your carry on often has wheels and is slightly larger and will go in the overhead compartment. As someone facing medical diversity, you are eligible to take with you a medical bag free of charge and cannot be checked at obligation. Friends, I am saying this with an asterisk. Do not abuse this. It is there for our safety. The amount of times I've had guests say, well, my medication is here as well as 17 pairs of shoes and my duty-free purchases, not the case. I often say two bags like this should be sufficient for your medical supplies for a flight. On your flight, you should have enough with you for 48 hours in case there is a flight interruption or you get um, rerouted or have to do an overnight somewhere. So 48 hours of care in your carry-on. Um, the other reason I say your medical bag is not obligated to be checked is the moment you say you have a medical bag, if they bulk out in cabin space, your carry-on has the right to be checked. Your medical bag does not uh, is not considered an obligation. Um, so I would take with you an extra change for the flight, um, be it clothing change or whatever, especially long hauls. Like we have um, in Toronto, we often see Toronto, Montreal, Montreal, Doha, Doha, Kochi or something like, you know what I mean? Like people are traveling uh, yeah. through various connections, London, Gatwick, then Doha or Dubai or whichever. Um, so we're talking about 18 hours plus take with you enough for about 48 hours minimum mm -hmm. outside of your travel time. So if your trip is giving you almost 24 hours, I would make it then three days worth of packing. Because if you have to do a layover because there was a flight interruption in Doha and you're there for another 12 hours, you wanna have enough to feel comfortable and not worry. I think that's, it's always easier to not worry than to be worried that you don't have enough. Um, I cannot emphasize this enough, friends, only your necessities in that medical bag, your medication, all of it, not just the 48 hours worth, like you want those prescriptions on there, your medical supplies. So if you're self catheterizing and you're catheterizing every four hours with a sterile catheter, you're going to be taking at least 12 catheters per day, et cetera, and so forth. Like you can do quick math there. Um, so you want to be able to, uh, to accommodate all of this. So often what I do, if this helps, the trick of the day again, another fun trick is a collapsible bag. So this bag looks very small. You can see my fingers about the thickness of it, weighs nothing. These you can buy at grocery stores, dollar stores, luxury stores. I mean, every single bag has a nylon tote that you can find. The nice thing about this is it expands to a full size duffel weighs nothing but the nice thing is if they say hey we're gonna have to check your carry-on you can pop this open and say not a problem let me put my medical supplies in here um but i don't need to carry a third bag with me it's just if they don't have cabin space it's again it's nothing malicious it's nothing like that but i will be taking out that simple bag just this with my medication and then maybe one more with my ostomy supplies that's it um, and then they can check the wheelie bag and you feel safe that you have all your emergency care items with you in something that then later, if you don't need A, it doesn't weigh anything, but B, it's compact, waterproof. Again, I often go with nylon versus leather or something like that because all those other items are going to be heavy, heavy, heavy. I see people showing up to airports or on cruises with the purse and the tote. And there's like a cooler bag with snacks and then a wheelie bag. And then you stopped at duty free and purchased all the gifts for all the loved ones. And it really becomes a lot. Don't worry about all those other things. Just carry your necessities, maybe a spare underwear, or a change of like uh, soft pants. So for men or women that would go with like a workout style pants, because not only does it give you the flexibility for your pouches, should they fill on an aircraft, you do produce more air. Um, but two, they don't weigh anything. They can be washed with water. They're often like a poly blend or nylon. They dry very quick, right? Um, so something light and simple. Go ahead. I have another question from Natalie, I think. Yes. I was told to always carry my medical supplies with me because you never know what's going to happen with your luggage. Yes, So correct. even though the flight might be 48 hours or whatever, you don't know if your luggage is going to, it might get lost and then you're stuck with nothing. So I was always told, have a bag. I keep my husband's old CPAC bag. 
Yeah, super the- smart. Those are very compact and easy to use. Yeah. Right. And they said, always carry everything with you. Do not put anything in your, in your check luggage because you don't know what's going to happen with your luggage. So the reason I say, that's a great point. I don't disagree with you. Luggage can go missing for a time. Aircrafts are based on weight balance. So often people go, <laughs> oh my God, they lost my luggage. They didn't lose it. They had to move. I mean, luggage does get lost on the side note, but uh, they had to move it because of weight balance to accommodate for passengers and for necessities. Again, I can't emphasize this enough, necessities. Um, So if there is a pet that is traveling, that pet will be a priority over a luggage bag. Uh, But with this said, the reason I said 48 hours or 72 hours um, is not because I don't disagree with you. I want to make that very clear. If you are a frequent changer, I will let you guys know perspective. So I travel all the time. I change my ostomy minimum full change, not convexity, not disposable, none of that. I do a full change once a day. I also self catheterize. So I'm using a new catheter every four to six hours. We're talking about a lot of medical supplies in one day. Uh, Pouch, flange, paste, If I choose a barrier, I often don't travel with any of those things, but that's a personal choice. Again, I'm not deterring you from using that. I then have six to eight catheters per day. And should I be overnighting, I often have an overnight urine bag. So we're we're talking about a a really a mass amount of product for one week. Um, Most ostomy flanges come in a box of 10, a box of 10 I go through in about a week. So I'd be carrying if I'm going away sometimes for a month, right? If I'm going to Europe and traveling to multiple places or I'm going back home to visit family, we're looking at three weeks. I'm taking upwards of 60 medical flange sets. So pouch and bag for each set, I'm looking at some paste. So one tube of paste for maybe five to 10. So that's three or four tubes of paste. I then have catheters for every six to eight, uh, four to six hours. So we're looking at about eight in a day or 10 in a day. If I drop one or sometimes they're dirty, whatever, you know what I mean? Overnight bag, I take an extra one in case one leaks. So in a week there'd be seven, but I take an eighth one. So we're talking about a lot for someone like me. If you are not a frequent changer, I would take a backup plus whatever you would use for 72 hours. So including a change in there, right? Say you just changed before you're boarding an aircraft or before you go swimming, if you're hiking, the temperatures are going to affect flange wear, things like that. That's why I say that. If you can take all your medication and all, sorry, all your medical supplies with you, power to you, a hundred percent. But if you're like me, I only pack for about four, three, four days worth in my carry-on because otherwise it becomes unmanageable and unnecessary. The other thing too, just to tie into this, I just want to share, no matter where you're going locally, in your in your community domestically or internationally reach out to the association that you believe may apply to that city or that country because should you have a need for medical supplies if your bag goes missing Mm -hmm. you can reach out and they'll be able to source enough for the moment to then purchase or to claim with insurance or to go to a medical facility they'll be able to source you medical supplies to hold you over until you're able to find your own care Hey, my other um, question, am I still on? Yeah. My other question is, I'm going on a, a trip that we're going to Alaska. Oh, first we're going, we yeah, finally, nice. we're giving, it's three years it's been canceled once because I and had the surgery. you didn't us. We're all like. Well, anyway, the question I have is we're going to be seven days in Denali. So they said, I have to pack that plus a different suitcase. So I'm going to assume that they're not going to lose my stuff when I, for the ship. So I should just take what I need for like plus one or two extra days. Don't pack for the whole 17 days to, to schlep to Denali. Um, I, would, I, I wouldn't say that. No, I would pack for what your care is plus 72 or 48 hours. So if you're someone who changes every two days mm-hmm. and you're going for 17 days, you're going to lead at least what? Eight, seven, right? Right. Eight to 16, nine items would be 18, right? So you'd need nine changes. We'll, we'll just round up just in case I would pack 10 just in case, right? Like you need that buffer. The other thing too, is let's not forget like any other time, no matter if your situation is comfortable or not, your flange or your catheters or your dressings may not last as long or may Mm. last longer. So if you're swimming, you maybe are going to change more frequently. Or if you're also in a climate that will change the use of that product. So for example, we have ostomates uh, globally that 
trek Mount Kilimanjaro, when you're in minus 45 outdoors in a tent changing, it is a very different climate than in a washroom or on an airplane or in your home. Um, so the way the product will mold to your skin, the way it will adhere, the way it will actually be able to be used will be different, right? So if you're on a cruise, you actually have access to all first world things. You typically have running water and such, but maybe you're walking around a bit more than usual, especially with the pandemic. A lot of us have been home more, right? Um, so maybe you're doing a little bit more sightseeing. You're getting up every day, going to a dinner or a gala or a, like different festivities. They say, hey, look at these beautiful glaciers. It's minus 10 out right? You need to take into account that. So I would pack, if you're not an everyday changer, not for 17 changes, I would pack for what you would change in that time plus one or two. Because like I said, the, the first five days are going to be separate and then we go to the ship. So if I'm doing five days, I'll take enough for like four changes plus an right, extra. Right. Exactly. And then so and the other stuff can be on the ship because they, they shouldn't lose it. <laughs> Correct. But if they do, you should still have a buffer. So those you're taking six instead of your five, I would right. take seven. You know what I mean? Like yeah, just got you. Got you. for the mm -hmm. uncontrollable because it happens even at home. I mean, I know sometimes I'm changing to get ready for work and I'm like, oh, I need to change now instead of tonight. Mm -hmm. It was unexpected. Yeah, no. It wasn't anything I did differently. I didn't eat differently or whichever, but um, right. I may need the extra change. So yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, this is why I say less is more. So if you're someone who uses sprays and liquids and mm -hmm. uh, barriers of different types, I mean, in general, I think for your skin, less is more and your wound care nurse or your medical team will speak to that specifically for your mm -hmm. care. But if you're able to simplify things, I think for your mental well-being, it helps a mm -hmm. lot, but also for traveling, it of course simplifies mm -hmm. like anything. Okay, With this said, you. I will tell you, thank you, depending the mood I'm in, I overpack. A lot of people ask about that too, versus underpack. Um, that is a personal choice. But uh, mm -hmm. in regards to your <laughs> medical supplies, what I will say is take your full amount of medication with you. Do not check any medication. Zero. Don't check any medication. I always take it more. Take Pardon? extra because you don't know if you're going to drop it in the toilet yeah. or drop it yeah, down 100%. the sink. So I take my full bottles. I'm a transplant recipient. I take steroids. I take um, antibiotics. I take all kinds of things, anti-rejection meds, et cetera. I don't dose out my medication because I keep it in that bottle as it came. Right. This is my full dose for a month. I don't care if it's a month or a week. I often get the newest order. Like I like right. order refill and tell them, oh, I'm going on a trip. And they'll give me a fresh bottle of which, unless it's two days later, of course, but um, right. <laughs> a fresh bottle of my prednisone or whichever, mm -hmm. um, all the medication I'm on, because then it's also dosed out. Should there be mm -hmm. a medical emergency, it's right. all listed prescription. Got my prescribing doctor is on there. The pharmacy contact is right. Like everything is covered. Mm -hmm. um, you should not be checking any medication. Do not check mm -hmm. your meds. Thank Anywhere. you. <laughs> Um, I want to talk about one quick thing, <laughs> kind of going back to planes and trains, I would say, more so than cruises. Anywhere you're going to be sitting a long period of time, we often uh, pull out some of these lovely masks for us lazy people on a flight. Um, and these beautiful inflatable pillows or microfiber pillows, they go around our neck and we feel super comfortable in them. Guys, these are disgusting. They're so dirty all the time. <laughs> so if you buy the inflatable one, this is your best option. The microfiber ones are beautiful. The ones with like jelly filling, silicone, they feel like you're on a cloud. But the first thing we see guests do is go, oh, I dropped it. Airports are disgusting. <laughs> Oh, I tied it around my purse. Do you know where your purse went? On the floor, it went on a bus, it went on a counter at a restaurant, it went here, it went there, it went everywhere. It went on very dirty surfaces. And now you're putting that beautiful neck pillow, which is so soft and has a floral print or Hawaiian palm trees on it, all over your face and neck. And during a pandemic, we're talking about a high exposure to germs, guys, let alone without the pandemic. So if you have a, a comfort requirement and you want a neck pillow, get an inflatable one. This is like a plastic, soft plastic on the outside. Wipe it down with a cloth. If you think you've dropped it in the washroom, I see it minimum 
10 times a day, people are dropping things everywhere in front of, I, 10 times a day, 10 times an hour. Um, but it will also double as a comfort seat. That's why I say the inflatable. So for people who have hernias or who are a special colorectal post-operative and you're sitting for a long time. Additionally, who are we kidding? Truck drivers, they are sitting for long hauls. You often end up with all kinds of um, wounds, open sores, things like that. From sitting, your tailbone really takes an impact. This will double similar to the donut that you see at the hospital or a comfort pillow, um, but it works for so many other things. In an emergency, if you're in water, it's a flotation device. It is everything you can imagine and more highly, highly recommended inflatable, collapsible, something that can be washed, wiped down. Um, these take less than 10 seconds to inflate. Like I could probably do it on video right now and, and I have zero strength when it comes to breathing. Um, so those are really great. But then the other thing with your eye mask here, if you do have one of these, you dropped your regular mask on the ground, it's now dirty, throw it out. This can double as a mask until you have access to one. Okay, friends. Um, does anyone have any questions? I'm totally open to questions about all these fun things. You may want to know where I'm getting some items. In that case, I, I'm not sponsored by anyone. So I don't want to like say like, this is the brand because I think everyone's personal choice is the best bet. Like you may have a favorite Kleenex or a favorite hand sanitizer. I think that's very personal. Some people use organic or not. Um, for anything that is regarding sanitary and being sterile, always look for that alcohol content um, as it, it will make sure things are disinfected. Keep hydrated, please keep hydrated. Extreme temperatures and uh, altitude changes and pressure changes on the ocean, in an aircraft, on a train, et cetera. Your hydration is a really big thing. Please be mindful of that because the day you get sick, it may not be food poisoning, it may be dehydration and you just don't know it. Um, some quick hacks for hydration. If you don't have access to like a Pedialyte or a Gatorade, if you're in the middle of the desert or whatever, if you're camping with friends, some salt water and orange juice is perfect. Just a little bit of salt in your water and some orange juice, you know, start building up those electrolytes real quick. Don't overdo it. Be mindful. Always ask your medical team before you go on a trip for any of these hacks because they may not be applicable to you. So I am not a doctor, nor am I your caregiver. So I want to make sure you are seeking the right resources for your health. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of tips and tricks and I can go on in detail. Bring your questions forward as I like catering them a little bit more to my audience. Thank you so much. There's just a couple of things that I did want to piggyback off you because you uh, pretty much covered most of most of it. Um, but I did want to mention that maybe a few weeks before you go on your trip, chances are it'll probably be your first trip, one that you haven't gone on in a while. Try to make a checklist of everything that you use when you change your appliance. Um, there's times that maybe you're a procrastinator like me and you just start to pack everything the day before. <laughs> and there is chance, there is times where you forget to pack certain things that are very crucial. Like you mentioned the pace or even, uh, an Eakin ring or even sufficient amount of supplies. So just do a quick little checklist. So that way the day of travel or the day before travel, you make sure that you have everything covered. Um, when it comes down to the travel card, you also mentioned it. The UOAA has one. It looks kind of like, oh, okay. It looks kind of like this. These cards are good before your vacation because if you're ever, um, you kind of get priority to use the restroom. So I don't know if you've ever been in the lines of the cruise ships um, to use the restroom. They get very long, even in the airport. At least with this medical necessity paper, you will be able to uh, kind of skip the line because of the medical necessity that you do have. I, I wanted to speak to that very quickly. Yes. It is valid in airports, as you mentioned, and cruise ships. However, outside of the Americas, it is currently not being validated. Um, so just be mindful of that if you're going to Europe or Asia Pacific right now. There is an international one with the International Ostomy Association. 
I can post that link. I believe it's the, not the IOA, it'll come to me, but the International Awesome Association has one that comes in various languages that you can print off works just the same. The only thing is um, for these cards, they're, they're an association card. So it's not that they're not valid. It's just, they're not obligated to follow outside of the US or outside of Canada, et cetera. Um, but with the airline, 100%, you are also eligible to pre-boarding and any accessible washrooms. Yes, thank you for clarifying that. Um, another tip that I was actually taught by another ostomy was if you are going camping, for example, like you had mentioned, which was a great example, something that you can do just to ensure that at least you do have uh, paper towels that are somewhat clean, you can put them in a Ziploc bag. And at least that way you have moist paper towels wherever you go. And it's kind of um, a comforting thing to know that you won't have to scavenge for water or anything clean in that sense. So if you did have to change your ostomy appliance, keeping it in a Ziploc bag with moist paper towel is a great option as well. I did want to mention um, a stoma dome to protect the stoma because airports, train stations, um, any station really of transportation does generally have a lot of people. And at least the stoma dome can protect the stoma when you're in a very congested area. So it is a good option to have for more of a protection um, to the stoma. So I actually do have an example. These things are great. Um, they attach to your appliance let me see. Yeah, they attach to your appliance with Velcro in the back. So with a Velcro strap, you're able to place it on top of the ostomy bag, right where your stoma would be, and then you would place the stoma dome. The stoma dome is um, reusable. So this isn't what you would throw away. Um, what you would just essentially throw away is the pouch with the Velcro strap, because it does come with uh, an extra amount of the Velcro straps. I know someone mentioned as well um, urostomies and if you had to wear a um, like a bedside bag while you're on a long flight, but uh, you don't have to do that. For example, even if you were to go to Disney World, you would be walking around for some time and you just kind of don't want to stop at every rest stop um, to empty out your bag. There is something called a barred leg bag. Leg so bag. Yes, <laughs> these are a great tool. Not many people know about it. Um, they're much smaller. It's much smaller than the bedside bag that what you're probably used to. Um, but this, you just strap it onto your thigh or to your calf, anywhere below the stoma. And it is like an extra reservoir to hold your urine. And that way you can just, you know, be a little more confident that you don't have to stop at every single restroom to empty out your pouch. Um, you also don't want to change your eating or drinking habits before you go on vacation. Um, you just don't want to mess with the routine that you have when it comes down to that. That will have a negative effect. So if you've been drinking a certain amount of water, if you've been on a certain diet, continue that. You don't want to make any drastic changes before your vacation. Um, I know that you had mentioned about the scissors, which I didn't know with airlines that you were able to take scissors so long they're less than an inch um, long. I was always going, I mean, I was going to recommend maybe pre-cutting all of your appliances if you don't already receive them pre-cut so that that way um, you don't have to have the stress of how you're going to cut your appliance. Yeah. So pre-cutting, I just want to add to that. That's a great point. So pre-cutting is not only great for aviation if you don't want to take scissors with you and be sent to secondary, blah, 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 blah. Um, but if you're in a tight pinch, you don't want to necessarily have to be fumbling around and worrying. So mm -hmm. a lot of patients I see, and as a traveler as well, I often pre-cut most of my carry-on items or my urgent care items when I'm going to work and things like that. So then I literally, oh, I have to change. I think there's like maybe not, et cetera. Let me just change this very quickly and not worry about these extra accessories. And this is kind of what I was mentioning before that less is more. So of course, if you can avoid taking scissors, avoid them. Phenomenal, a great point. But if you are choosing to take scissors, just be mindful of that. And that's anywhere. I didn't wanna just say airlines, but amusement parks have restrictions on firearms and dangerous goods. You're not gonna be going in there with a knife either. 
Um, so just be mindful of that. I just wanted to speak to the stoma guard very quickly, specifically if you're going through a scanner, be it at a concert venue um, or at an airport. So a lot of people fear that TSA pat down, the dreaded pat down, and then there's something referred to as secondary. Um, so stoma caps can send the alarms off and that is okay. Don't worry, if alarms go off, you have the right to say, hi, I'm an ostomate. And there is a global law for ostomy patients and those facing diversity in disabilities that states the following, that you are not to be obligated to remove anything or show anything until there is a medical professional present. So be you in Canada, the US, in India, in Chile, in China, et cetera, should you get pulled to secondary, they have the right to ask you to point to where your stoma is. So say if I had a port on my chest, they would say, can you point to where it is? And I'd say, oh, it's here. And they say, cover it and they will tap around because what they are looking for is explosives. Um, ostomies in the past were like the notorious diamond smuggling tool. Um, so guys don't smuggle any diamonds. Okay, I know we're all collecting diamonds in our ostomy pouches, but they were used for that. So that's one of the reasons why they became kind of a high targeted area. People would go, well, what's in this bag? Because really anything can go. I mean, I could put God knows what in there and I could be like, oh yeah, it's just stool or it's just urine when really it could be a whole lot of dangerous goods. Um, so what they're looking for is connectors to explosives though. So they will ask you to cover where your stoma is be it on your abdomen, on your chest, your port, central lines, pick lines, et cetera. They'll ask you to cover it. So if it's a pick line, I'm gonna be covering it. They will tap around and you can let them know, oh, there is sensitivity or they may not tap. They do have the right to tap, but they may also just scan around and then do something referred to as a swab. The same swab that they sometimes swab your shoes with. It's a little cotton pad on a, on a ball thing. They touch around your abdomen or in this case around my arm, they'd go like this. And that pad goes in and gets tested for explosive, any type of residue, so gunpowder, things like that, and for drugs. Um, and that's it. Now, if you get pulled to secondary anywhere and they ask you to remove your dressing of any type, you have the legal right in every country in the world to ask for a medical professional to be present. Um, an agent cannot do that without a medical team as they're not doctors. They don't have the right to access that. It's like anything else. They would then if they consider you a criminal smuggling diamonds, they will call a armed force and they will call a medical team um, to be there for your change. That's a very good point. I, I actually did not know that. Um, one of the questions we did receive was, can the stoma dome be used for double ostomies? So I realized that maybe me saying and explaining what it is wasn't very clear. So for example, if you have a stoma, you would put on your skin barrier like normal, and then you would apply your pouch. On the pouch, right above the stoma, you would apply the Velcro. Give me a moment, this is actually a little bit harder than I thought. With the stoma dome that already has the Velcro in the back, you'd cover it. So if you had two ostomies, even if they were above each other or side to side, you can't do so because it's so small, it's just covering the stoma itself. So I hope that answers that question. It's then, similar to like a jock strap in sports for exactly, those who refer to exactly sports. What it is. And the nice Not thing about that is if you do get pulled to secondary and they say, well, what is this hard plastic surface? You can remove it super easily. It is Velcro, as she mentioned. Um, so you just slide them off. Just be mindful of the placement as she showed you. The opening is on the bottom so that you don't have any buildup or um, sometimes they refer to it as pancaking. Yes, exactly. See on the so there is a little bit of visibility to the stoma, but it doesn't completely flatten it out. That was a good point. Um, Mr. Hauser, you have a question. Hello, I have a question. Huh? Yes. Yes, uh, about the overnight travel, you mentioned this leg bag, and uh, what we, so I use Hollister products for my urine stoma bag. And they're not in the, those supply list. So where, where can I get these leg bags? Okay, so I'm, we could probably write a script for you to add it on there. Um, however, there is multiple supply stores that do have it available. And we can always email you the, the, the link of all the supply stores that we do have. 
Um, okay. So if you can just write your email there. But that is something that sometimes it does get covered by insurance. Okay, but what's the precise name of this called? Okay. Bag? It's called, it's the, the company is Bard. So it's B as in boy, uh -huh. A as in apple, mm -hmm. R as in Ronald, and mm -hmm. D as in David. Bard, okay. Bard leg bag. Leg bag, okay. Yes, Thank you. it does also come with the straps. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I did, uh, just to piggyback on that, for digestive ostomies, there is an extended size in bags. Often you hear of the short versus long drainable or non-drainable bag <laughs> for urine or digestion, but they do have an extendable bag, which sometimes is used more commonly for those who irrigate. So for those who irrigate, you will find sometimes they do have these extended bags. They are quite bulky. They're not like the leg bag shown here. So for digestive um, fecal matter, etc. cetera, uh, they are significantly longer and larger. But if you are concerned about a long haul trip or maybe you're overnighting somewhere that the washroom isn't comfortable for you, that you don't wanna be getting up frequently or, or you're even facing distress, maybe sometimes someone ate something that made them uncomfortable. Um, these bags are a great option. And the leg bag for urinary is phenomenal. Um, it gives you that buffer, I would say, to make it to a washroom. The other thing too, is if you don't have access to a washroom, plants are perfectly happy with urine. So don't worry. <laughs> when I was little, I used to use a leg bag. And if I was playing in the backyard and I would get so distracted, my mom would literally be like, can you empty your bag? Like this is getting out of control. You're not going to the washroom. Um, not to say it's the most hygienic, but if you're in a desert or by the beach and you're an hour from the nearest washroom, you can dig a little hole and empty your urine bag and you'll be perfectly fine. All right, and then the last thing that I wanna mention that I have become extremely fond of, uh, I do wanna mention that this particular accessory is only for people that have fecal diversions, but more specifically a colostomy. If you are already on a closed, uh, closed ended pouch, there is something called a Colo Magic liner. And I am, I'm pretty obsessed with these. I, um, they look, so what they are, are little liners that go inside of the closed ended pouch and you'll kind of turtleneck it out before you uh, secure the bag to the flange. And what this does is it allows you to dispose of the stool uh, without having to dispose of the bag. And the reason that this is a good option is because if you are out, uh, for example, on an airplane and you may have forgot to, like you had mentioned, pack some extra bags, or if you're at a restaurant and you just wanna throw away the stool inside but keep the pouch to not waste so much supplies while you are on vacation, this is what they look like. So the stool will fill inside, you'll remove the bag and take it out from a closed ended pouch. These are flushable bags. So essentially the, the bag is collecting all the stool and you have a clean appliance once you throw this away. These are very cost effective, these liners. Um, I believe that for a pack of 50, it's about $22. I could be a little bit wrong, but these are such a great accessory to have um, considering that they are flushable and biodegradable. So very quickly. You'll get the liner. You'll stick it inside of the closed ended pouch. And then you wanna open the liner, which there, like so. You're gonna close the liner and then you'll clip it onto your flange. So it keeps things a little more clean and you're not running through a bunch of bags while you're on, a, on vacation, like so. So I've become extremely fond of these ever since I heard of them. <laughs> They're also really easy to replace should you ever run out. Um, kind of going back to the, what I was talking about before, but they're really, they're a phenomenal product actually, uh, for, especially for people that um, have a fairly slow output or have a colostomy or um, do like a one-time irrigation and then uh, wait for their digestive or fecal matter to come out. They're phenomenal. But um, if you don't have access to them, the biodegradable pet bags, <laughs> yeah, they're phenomenal because they're biodegradable. Um, a lot of right. places you go to though will have a lot of 
restrictions on what is required of garbage, access, et cetera. Um, in the women's washroom, your go-to is gonna be the hygienic bin is probably your best bet if someone has like restrictions, like no plastic, no fecal matter, da, da. Certain countries do have quite strict guidelines around that, um, but other countries also actually have ostomy washrooms. So for all patients with ostomies, especially in Asia Pacific, Southeast Asia, you're gonna be seeing more and more as times change, this become part of the norm where accessibility is no longer just mobility, but you're gonna be seeing a lot of ostomy accessible washrooms. Wow, that's wonderful. I know that uh, we actually do have a couple of accessible, um, ostomy accessible bathrooms. So the mirror will sit a little bit lower. There is a, a kind of like a table for you to be able to place all of your supplies. So that is a, a nice feature that now we're starting to see it more and more. Yeah, it's phenomenal. So you'll see that I would say Europe and Asia is probably a big step ahead when it comes to accessibility in certain countries. Um, in other countries, not as much, of course, but for example, in Iceland, accessibility is a law and museums, spas, all of that actually provide a discount or free entry for those facing diversity. So, I mean, it's, it's becoming a, a very common conversation and please know that you're not alone. And I encourage you all to take that next adventure, even if it means going to a wedding for the first time since surgery, um, empower yourself in the knowledge you have in the medical team around you, because this is meant to give you a better life than the challenges you were facing before. And it will open the doors to an amazing new world. Yes, I, I do have to agree with you. That is nice that we're seeing it more and more. Uh, Natalie, you have a, a question? I have a statement. The, uh, I don't know exactly where this person lives, but where I count, I think they have now what they call Lynn's Law, that the bathrooms have to put in a shelf, 12 by 18 inches long, six inches wide, with a hook five feet above the toilet, for those that have TPN. And also, I mentioned to my temple about their bathroom handicap does not have a, sh have a sink at all. And they're not going to renovate it because they just, but there is thing called pure, pure zone, P-U-R-R -R zone, where it's like a debate, a, a, a spritzer on that hooks onto the outside of your toilet tank. And I mentioned to my temple and they're willing to put up the 12, 12 by 18 inch shelf and the, and the stuff for me. You just have to open your mouth. I, I, yeah. I do like that you did speak up, but that's very nice. You're, you're the change that, that needs to happen. Right. And it, it's so happening. It is, yeah. Like you said, slowly but surely. But if we don't, oh, if we don't say something, nothing's going to get done. I, I agree. And a lot of people aren't um, aware of ostomies. So it's nice that you did bring it up to them and you, you gave them solutions. So that, that was very nice of you. Yeah. I think uh, thank tying you. into that, I totally agree. I think the moment you share your journey and share what mm -hmm. your needs are, people will be more open to that mm -hmm. because there is a lot of stigma um, around having an ostomy and, you know, I'll, I'm going to share a really quick story with you guys. So when I was past president of my local chapter on the board, my dad joined the board because he was coming out to our events and really helping out. He's quite a social person. Um, but we were having a rap session. And the reason I'm sharing this is because I think it's going to resonate with absolutely everyone. But we were having a wrap session and people were sharing their and expressing their distress around accessibility for washrooms. Having a leak is a huge thing, right? Like there's a lot of shame involved sometimes or fear and insecurity around what if I'm not near a washroom. And uh, my dad used to be a mailman. He's now retired. And he said, amigos, let me tell you. And I was like, no, you cannot relate, sir. <laughs> this is not your time to speak. And he was like, one day I was getting into the truck of uh, my Canada Post truck, right, for the mailman, and he would, he lifted up his leg and he thought, this is the perfect place for a fart. And <laughs> I'm sitting there mortified. Like, I'm just like, people are sharing like very intimate situations. And my dad is sharing something that I really think he shouldn't be sharing with anyone. And he's like, <laughs> and I lifted up my leg and I shift my pants. Right? <laughs> like, and he, my dad is not an ostomate. He was speaking very candidly. And the reason why he shared this is he said, it happens to everyone. We all have washroom needs. We all have accessibility. Well, I go home and I share this story with my mom and my mom's response is one time. 
this was all the time. <laughs> so listen, the moment you share your need, if he had shared to someone like, hey, do you have a washroom? I'm sure he wouldn't have been in that situation, but instead he thought, oh, maybe, maybe I can manage this, right? <laughs> the moment you share, be it with your friends, family members, your medical facilities, how many medical facilities are still getting renovated and accessibility mm. doors are a thing, but maybe the washrooms aren't open to just everything just yet right and what mm -hmm. ostomies look like is another thing too a lot of people think they're just poo and pee and sometimes an ostomate doesn't even have an appliance sometimes it's internal and they just need access to a washroom it is your right to empower yourself and your team is there to help you so by you speaking up if you ever need support from the medical facility you go to from the organization you're a part of or an international organization reach out because we're all here for you. And as a patient, I know sometimes it's very difficult. We have to be our own advocates sometimes, or we kind of are fighting the system. And, and slowly that is changing. Globally, it is changing mile a minute. So. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. All right. So is there any more questions before we um, complete today? Uh, there is someone raising their hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Physically. I was muted. I wanted to, um, well, I wanted to share something that I use, uh, the bags to dispose your, when you're changing your bag. And I found this on Amazon and it is amazing. Um, I can see, let's see, can you see that? Yes, boss, boss. Okay, uh, it comes um, 90 bags and they're nine by 15. You, you can, so you can take out as many as you need when you travel and you cannot smell anything. <laughs> oh, good. Nothing. You close that baby up and nobody knows that you, there was a bag change, nothing. They're amazing. So I just wanted to share that with everyone. And I do buy these on Amazon, but um, you mentioned that- Can you that, hold them up again? Oh, of course. I don't know, you, can you see that okay? I think it says BOSS, B-O-S, yes, B-O-S, that's what it says. Um, they're amazing. I mean, they last a long time because the, 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 the uh, appliance that I use does not bring a bag to dispose of your bag with. And I didn't want to just throw that in a whatever because those bags, uh, which, who is it that... Um, Hollister is the one I think that always brings a, a separate bags, but I can't use Hollister. It doesn't work for me. But anyway, just so you know, those this is amazing. And I get it through Amazon. I'm sure you could get it somewhere else, but I love Amazon. But anyway, the other question was, uh, you were going to um, recommend something to cover the ostomy so it doesn't get like when I shower and it, I hate how it gets all wet drives me crazy is there something that's user friendly i mean i've tried so many things that i could cover it with so it doesn't always get so soaked and i'm always terrified that it's going to peel off and i'm sorry i know there are people who shower without their bags but i cannot do it can't do it i just can't i just uh, wonder do you have something, something to really show i can speak to a few things but i'd be happy if you have something okay. Okay, I just have one thing, but I don't know. I wouldn't really recommend it to be on a daily use just because I don't know how sensitive your skin is either. This would be more like if you wanted to go into a pool oh, or okay. I think some Lenora had mentioned a water ride, you know, that it's kind of on a, on a situation type of basis. It's called okay. a sheer seal. So it's, I don't think my camera's that great, but it's kind of like a transparent dressing that goes all along the edges of the uh, skin barrier, and it is completely waterproof. You can barely even tell that it's there, but if you do have sensitive skin, if you are somebody that does react to the transparent dressing, sometimes it can cause uh, blisters if your skin is very sensitive, but this is a great waterproof um, type of uh, tool for the... Um, skin barrier itself. There's also another brand called Ativa, which also create, it has a clear um, transparent dressing that goes on it. And this one will go less on your skin. 
So the sure seal extends farther out uh, past the skin barrier, and then the Ativa skin barrier, transparent dressing, I mean, goes less on the skin, but it still protects the skin barrier. But Those I'm are sure two great Maria options. Uh, I know a few brands, be it B Bronze, Salt, Hollister, Coloplast, also have the hydrocolide extenders. Yeah. Um, the thing with hydrocolide is it will expand with moisture. Not necessarily a bad thing, as it does still create a barrier, but it is hydrocolide, so it kind of grows with the moisture of your skin or moisture that it's exposed to. The other thing is 3M has a tape um, similar to IB3000. Uh, what you often see on central lines or pick lines or even your IV. It's that clear stretchy tape that when you pull parallel to your skin, it creates zero friction against your skin and it's very easy to put on and off. Some people do a full barrier around your ostomy. Um, for swimming, I will say temperature type of water and your comfort level are, are three big things for swimming. If you are in salt water, it may react differently with your products than if you are in chlorine um, or lake water. Uh, the shower is very different. The other thing is if your pouch, not your flange, but if your pouch has like that mesh kind of barrier on the outside, that can create a moisture lock in between. And you kind of have this like um, I didn't grab one. I should, I should have brought one forward, but you have like a, a second layer. So sometimes moisture gets in there. If you put a few tissues in, it'll absorb. Um, you should be comfortable showering. I know it can be uncomfortable because it's a bit moist um, or damp they get. I take really long showers and I know that if I do come out and it's really wet and I don't want to change, I use a face cloth uh, between the pouch and the flange to absorb any moisture that will accumulate underneath because the outside will actually dry quite quickly. One and two, my clothing sometimes even absorbs it. So a face cloth, you can fold it in half and put it one part on the inside, one part on the out. For swimming though, I would, I would see how you do on your own first and then gauge if you need all these things. There are quite a few brands that create phenomenal products for swimming with an ostomy and for moisture exposure. But often I cannot emphasize this enough, less is more. So I've seen these rubber, they look like girdles almost. They're like a rubber tube that you suction the air out and it's covering your abdomen. Yeah. Two key things with that. Water is not toxic to you unless you do have, some people do have like a H2O, whatever allergy. It, I mean, it's very different, but uh the water isn't gonna harm your stoma. Your stoma is not a completely sterile environment anyways. Um, there is stool involved. So if you are in a lake, don't worry if water gets in your pouch or something like that. And you're like, oh my God, I'm gonna get an infection. You should be fine. Unless you have open wounds, that's where I'd be more conscious. Um, but there are a lot of brands. I'm not gonna name them all because really I would say literally every single brand has some sort of tape. Um, flange extender cover. I mean, there's so many things you so can use. Products. So, so many products. Um, what you may find really comforting for swimming is something that holds you in place, especially if you're like me, who's like, I'm going to jump off this cliff into the lake. I belly flopped. And that's the worst thing you could do. Be careful with your health, of course. Um, but if you're more comfortable with, for men, often they say, oh, swimming shorts can be too low, get a higher rise one. Or you can even for women, I find um, you can share this hack with your men. If there is, I mean, there's lots of men that have ostomies, but there's these like tubular bralettes that uh, young yeah. women get that are just a microfiber, they can create it. It looks like an extension on your underwear or to your swimwear. Um, maternity extenders, they're literally a piece of fabric. Don't worry if it says maternity on it. That's a perfect barrier as well from moisture um, within reason. So you're still submersing yourself in water. All these other barriers, they keep you dry, but if you're producing sweat, you're actually going to build a sweat layer anyway. So it's not 100% effective. Your most effective option, be it for shower, or submerge, submersing yourself, will be tape. Tape with a bag or tape on its own, but your skin is gonna take quite a hit with that. So just be mindful of that. Um, but yeah, like a, a tegaderm, some people use Mefix, some people use 3M, uh, IB3000, like all these things are really um, 
fine. Just be mindful of your skin. Your skin integrity is a really big thing when you have an ostomy, especially if you're a new ostomate, your skin will not be used to that type of friction and exposure to adhesive, like different adhesive products. So um, I hope I that helps. I definitely agree. So this is just an example of what the barrier extenders look like for those of you that may not have it, like what Maria had mentioned. So these just go around the um, the skin barrier, 50% on the skin, 50% on the barrier. Stephanie Vasquez had mentioned uh, getting saran wrap press and seal um, with high tape. So this is an example of what high tape is. It is a zinc oxide based type of um, tape. And um, and then we have the uh, blue silicone tape, it's silicone, so it doesn't irritate the skin when it is time to come off. And I also added on the chat, um, a cover shower guard for the ostomy. You can get it on Amazon if that is something that you are interested. But just like how Maria Jose mentioned, less is more. The other thing, I just wanna speak to um, the, the guard that you show, the extenders. I don't know which one you had there, the Hollister, Convitec, B bronze. I think it's a B bronze. Oh, Adapt. Adapt. Perfect. So the Adapt ones, B bronze, they're hydrocolides. So like these also serve double uses. I cannot emphasize this enough. A blogger today was actually sharing their experience with them. And they're amazing on blisters on your feet. <laughs> so talk about a travel hack. If you cut your finger, it, a lot of them have aloe in them. So you can get them with or without aloe. Um, in case you have an allergy or something like that. But a lot of them are latex free, which is amazing for those who can develop allergies due to exposure or already have pre existing ones. But they double as so many things. So if you have an open wound, you can put this over a site and will actually create an, a very clean barrier without um, compromising the integrity of that wound until you're able to seek medical care. Um, so that's why they're great on blisters because they're absorbing that moisture over a blister without uh, ruining the skin. I know on social media recently, it's really popular for acne and things like that. I wouldn't recommend that as I would seek a dermatologist for those things. But if you're in a pinch and you're walking in Portugal in flip-flops and you have a blister where your flip-flop is, I mean, one of those works wonders. But the other thing too is where your stoma sits, you can actually get quite a bit of irritation on your skin based on where your pant line is, if it's cutting through, if it's not, if you're wearing a belt, et cetera. And these things create phenomenal barriers on your skin to protect the integrity of your skin outside of just the stoma site or even your flange. So if your stoma is closer to your hip or a bend point, so like a waistline or a crease in your abdomen, um, you can actually put those there and then you'll have less irritation, similar to how some people experience chafing under their arms or um, in your thighs. So these are great little hacks um, or some people actually with the dome, sometimes you do get a pressure point with the dome. So if you put that on your flange, you'll actually have a second barrier there to create a little bit less of a pressure point. I know nurses have even been using them um, over their nose with all the masking gear they've been using, so. Yeah, well, that's actually something that we had implemented here as well for protection. So yeah. those are very valid points. <laughs> Is there any um, questions before we wrap up? No. All right. So before we do end this meeting, I would like to make a couple of announcements. Uh, in preparation for next month, um, the English support group, it will be June 7th at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Um, so we will have Leanne Watanabe. She, I believe she lives in Hawaii. She's going to be a presenter speaking on swimming with an ostomy. So it's, again, perfect timing for summer. If you or anyone you know feel that you would benefit from the Spanish support group, <laughs> Maria Jose will be back on May 15th at 6 p.m. to speak about traveling with an ostomy. So that's great. They're going to love that as well. I wanted to mention that the UOAA website, uh, which is also ostomy.org, it is a great tool for anybody that does have an ostomy or even a caregiver of somebody that has an ostomy. There is an entire section on ostomies with support groups. So if you, for some reason, get stranded in another state or you feel that you would benefit from the support group uh, in the current state that you are traveling in, you can always do so and check out their website. 
if you want to be reminded about these meetings, the upcoming meetings, uh, please write your email in the chat room and we will make sure to send a reminder. You can also check our website at umiamihealth.org and click on the support group tab. All the upcoming uh, meetings will be posted there. So I do want to take the thank Maria Jose for giving us um, these wonderful and very necessary information on how to travel with an ostomy. I know that I learned a few things uh, with today from you. So that was great, as well as everybody else. I'm sure they did too. Thank you for having me. And if I can leave with one word is please be proud of the journey you've been on and take that risk for the next big adventure. It will make your life so much more fulfilled, even if it means just going to a wedding for the first time, traveling to a friend's house for dinner across the country by train or on your next amazing cruise, and of course, on your next flight. So I encourage you to take the risk, be proud of the journey you're on, and feel empowered in the knowledge you have and the knowledge you will gain with time. I wish you all the very, very best, and I thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. I will see you next month. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Good night. Bye.